Hey, what's up? How's it going there, everyone? It's Yasso here. And today I want to show you how to use the Blockchain Explorer to spot scam tokens and uh, pump and dumps. And the example that I'm going to use for today is Corgi. So why Corgi? A few days ago, I was surfing through a Facebook community group that I'm a part of and saw a post telling the community to get into Corgi. And the first thing I thought was, oh, it's another dog meme token. But I got curious, so I dug into the project and found suspicious things. I posted what I found up on that community group, and some people approached me and asked me how I was able to do it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I found out what I did. So here on the screen is CoinMarketCap, and we're just going to look up Corgi. And what most people do is they'll look over here at the audit section and see that the Corgi token is audit. However, you don't want to always believe what you see here for some projects. It's because audits typically what they do is they look at the integrity of the code and not the integrity of the team. And right now meme coins, doll coins, game coins, and you know many other coins what they are is they are just a clone, meaning a copy of whatever the original project is. For example, there's a lot of projects out there that are a clone of Shiba Inu. For example, I wouldn't be surprised if the Corgi coin is also a copy of Shiba Inu or some other dog token. So instead, what you want to do or what I do is I want to look at the contract. And we can do that by clicking on Binance Smart Chain on here. And let's let this load up. It's actually kind of slow. I'm surprised. There we go. Okay. So another thing that what other traders or investors do is they'll look at this right here. Holders, and we see that it's 47,000 addresses. Typically, 47,000 is a good number. But I'll come back to this here in a little bit here. Um, basically, this number tells you or gives you an idea of how many people are holding the Corgi token or whichever token you decide to look at. So instead, I'm gonna go down here to the transaction and I'm gonna just pick PancakeSwap here. Basically, PancakeSwap is the exchange that Corgi is using and this is also how people are getting Corgi token into their wallet. So let's click on that here. Wow, typically my computer does not run this slow. So let me show some basics here. When we see an address here that says this address from this address in to Pancake, what it's saying is that this address sold this quantity here on Pancake. And then up here, if we see it saying that it's from PancakeSwap going out to this address in this quantity here, that means that this address just bought or swapped um, this much token from PancakeSwap. And if we want to look into more detail, we can look at the transaction hash, which is over here. So I'm going to just open that up and quickly just go through that with everyone here. So here we can just see like a, the basics of the transactions, right? And this section right here tells you exactly what I just told you. The cool thing is that it gives you the amount. And this one here is 57 cents. So whoever did this transaction here just did that transfer for 57 cents. All right. So I'm going to go back here. And this is back to that, you know, um, transactions happening on PancakeSwap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to start digging in now, okay? So on the upper right here, what I did was I clicked last and that's going to give us the first few transactions uh, that was done on PancakeSwap regarding the Corgi token. And down here we can see that 10,000, sorry, not 10,000, but 10 billion of the Corgi supply was deposited into PancakeSwap 
281 days ago. Now if we go back over here, we can see that the max supply is 10 billion plus the circulating supply is 10 billion. So all of that token was deposited into Pancake. You can also see that right after that, there was a bunch of, or a few of the addresses that came in and swapped out the tokens right away. Most of the time, these are developers and the founders. So what I'm, what I'm going to do here is let's take a look at this one here. Since if, you know, I'm seeing 562 million uh, tokens. So let's take a look at this address here. Okay, so this address right here, right when we see that the 562 million tokens got deposited, right a few days right after that here, you can see the age here, that's the days, you can see it getting transferred out. And it looks like it's getting distributed into other address. So let's take a look at this one here, the 187 million. And when I dig into that one here, Yeah, we, we're pretty much seeing the same thing here. You can see that, hey, the, the 187 million token got deposited, and about 109 days ago, it got redistributed. So what exactly happened 109 days ago, right? So we could go back here. Let's look at the one year. It's not going to be one year. So right now it's, about, it's February 17th, 109 days ago. That's three months. That's a little over three months. So we're looking at this transfer these uh, redistribu redistribution of the 187,000 got redistributed around this time. It could be a way before this pump and pump right here, or it could could have happened around this time, right? Uh, when it when everything has already dumped, huh? you know. But it gives us an estimation of when that was. So I can go in here. Let's take a look. I'm going to take a look at the 87 million. All right, so right here we see that the 87 million got deposited right here or it came into that account right here. And right away, right after that, we see two cells of 30 million each that happened on PancakeSwap. Um, this account still holds 41 million Corgi token, but this is alarming because the when we look at the origination of this token here, it came from an account that was a part of the early adopters or early developers or founders of the Corgi project. So 60 million in total of this supply on this account was dumped on the market. And again, that was done 108 days ago. And if we look at back at the chart here, 108 days to 109 days ago, that's around this time right here. So that means this token, a holder, sent that token to that amount to this, and it those tokens got redistributed, it got redistributed again, and it got dumped, right? So now let's take a look at the next one. So I'm gonna delete that, exit out of that one. And this is the 40, yeah, the 40 million quantity and let's see yeah and then down here we see that 40 million coming into uh, this address 109 days ago and then again it got dumped um, they don't the developers or whoever the founders are or whoever owns this wallet they're not dumping the entire amount on the market but they are dumping a very significant amount so you see 13 million 10 million and then recently here what's interesting is that you see them reaccumulating again right and then, of course, they dumped again onto the market. So, 17, about 17 days ago, right? So, what exactly happened 17 days ago? So, let's look back a month. And today's the 17th, so early, yeah, in February, early February, what they were doing is they were, they reaccumulated, and I think it was, it was an attempt to repump the market, or repump this token. So there was an attempt to repump this token, and then if you look at that, once, once it pumped, 
once it pumped, they sold the tokens again. So I think that's something to really consider before jumping into projects like this. Uh, you want to look at and find like basically the early token holders uh, since it's because it's mainly the, the developers or the founders, um, you know, they hold these addresses. They're the folks who got into the project early. You got to keep that in mind. All right, so now let's look at another um, another token here. And it looks like this address here hasn't sold. The 50 million here is still in there. And... What did I click on? I think we're still on this one here. I think I exited that one out on accident. All right, and then let's see what happened in this one here, the 175 million. And right away, we see the zero corgi here. That means this account, uh, wherever it got sent to, was already dumped into the market. So you can see it, you know, 500 million got sold, 500 million got sold, 10 million got sold, and so forth, right? All right, so... We're we're really seeing like red flags there. And next, let me just go back to this over here. So I'm gonna just re-click on the Binance Smart Chain just to kind of restart this. So instead of looking at things based off of like you know, like tracking based off of just pancake, I'm gonna just go back down here. So we're back onto the Corgi smart contract detail on the Binance uh, ex Smart Chain Explorer. Yeah, I'm going to just click last again, right? So this time we're seeing something a little bit more different. We're seeing a bunch of these quantities of stuff being transferred out. What's interesting about this here is that if we look at this address here, it's the same, right? It's the same address sending a small amount of Corgi tokens out to other addresses. And let's take a look at this now. All right, so now let's look and see what this wallet is doing. And right away, look at all this here. I'm going to click the next couple ones. Right away, we see that it's sending small amounts of Corgi tokens, and it's trying to push, what it's doing is it's trying to push this number up. And that's because a lot of like newer traders and investors, what they do is they tend to use this number to get an idea of the interest level of you know how many people are actually interested in this project here so this wallet here is purposely generating fake interest that's basically what it is you know a lot of these addresses you know they're, they're actually real address but a lot of them don't even know that they own this token and that's why that's why wallet holders or developers if they know this they'll generate fake stuff all right, so here's another thing too. Um, if we take a look at the top right here, we see that there's 1,641 pages, all right? Um, in each of these pages, there's about 25 transactions on each of them. And, you know, if I could keep going and going here, it's going to keep going. I'm going to click last to see what happens at the end over here. And um, the last one, every, every, page, every page beside the last one has 25 transactions on there. And you can see when the first 1 million token supply came into here. And right away it started distributing. See that? Yeah, I'm going to just keep looking. Yeah, so it's pretty common for this address to do this, right? It's, as I mentioned earlier, it's generating fake uh, holders. So there's 6,041 in total. So let me just give you a number, an idea of what that is. So it's 25 for the number of transactions on the page times 1,641, that's how many pages there are, and look at that number right here, 41,000 holders, right, if we go back up here, that's 47, so 41,000 of the 47,000 addresses on here are r randomly generated by having the this address, or I want to say developer, whoever's on that team, you know, they're sending they're creating fake holders, you know. So I created this video to educate and show people how to use the blockchain explorer to spot scams, pump and dumps, and basically anything similar in category like to something like this happening on a token. 
Um, once you get familiar with reading and using Blockchain Explorer, uh, doing something like this that I did in this video can be done actually pretty quick. It takes 10 to 15 minutes to do and can save you a lot of money. Heck, actually personally, if, I, if it takes more than an hour or more, I actually will still personally do this. And, you know, if anything, it's a way to prevent yourself getting into scams or getting, getting yourself into pump and dumps. And the Blockchain Explorer is basically a really, really great tool. You know, when you, especially when you learn how to use it to track certain transaction and track what teams are doing or what's happening on, like, certain token, you know. Um, a lot of times, charts don't tell you exactly what's happening behind the scene, kind of like what I've shown you in this video here. All right, that's all I have for today. This video is for education purpose only and should not be used for financial advice. So if you have any questions for me, uh, you can let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to get to all of them. And uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.